This is slim pickings. Is this? Yeah. You, you, so in other words, just two of you can ask questions. All right. <clears throat> well, let's let's go ahead and get started. Good afternoon. Uh, it's uh, it actually is a pleasure for me to be uh, here to visit uh, our Jefferson County office uh, for EMA, a joint mission of uh, EMA and FEMA. Uh, this is the first chance that I have had to come and meet the uh, individuals uh, that are working here as we ramp up this uh, probably a long-term process uh, here in uh, Alabama, uh, this joint venture between uh, our state uh, and our federal agencies. But uh, here today we've had uh, good briefings. Uh, we've had a briefing uh, from uh, uh, FEMA. We've had a briefing from our regular briefing, which we have every day from EMA and FEMA. Uh, I've met uh, with uh, uh, Congressman Adderholt and his staff. Uh, we, we were glad to uh, be with them because uh, Congressman Adderholt uh, is uh, the chairman of the committee that actually oversees FEMA. Uh, so we were glad to have him with us today and also the fact that much of the damage occurred in his district in North Alabama. So he is very interested in, in this issue on two fronts. Uh, representing the people of his district and also the fact that that he uh, uh, oversees this in his committee uh, in Washington. I personally have visited as the governor 27 counties that have uh, had major damage in the state. Uh, we have spent the last three and a half weeks touring the state. Uh, I have had the privilege of visiting with individuals, those that have lost family members, uh, we have uh, consoled them, we have prayed with them, we have cried with them, we've, uh, we understand them. Uh, I understand what they've been going through. I understand them because I know the people of Alabama. Uh, and so I have spent a lot of time visiting with these people because I think that's very important. Uh, you know, I believe that this recovery has been very smooth. Uh, disasters in themselves are somewhat haphazard and every disaster is different. Uh, certainly this is a different one. Uh, this is not a hurricane. This is not a flood. Uh, the long track tornadoes that literally tore across North Alabama, uh, this is a different type of disaster and I'm sure that every disaster has to be treated differently. Uh, we have met obstacles as we have traveled along. But every day when we re meet those obstacles, what we've done is we've moved them aside and we have moved on and continued to progress to try to restore the lives of the people of this great state, uh, the people out there that are hurting every day. Now, two issues that uh, I, I spoke with uh, uh, Mike Byrne uh, about uh, and, and also with uh, Art Faulkner about on Wednesday. Uh, there were two issues that I particularly was interested in that I wanted us to look into uh, very quickly. One dealt with the cleaning of the lakes, uh, especially Lake Martin, but also Lake Neely. And uh, of course, we will look at all waterways in the state, all lakes, uh, if they're public lakes. Uh, and and the decision that has been made is that the governor's office uh, will be the governmental agency through which FEMA will have contact and we will use the Corps of Engineers to clean up these lakes. So this is the decision that has been made and uh, this is the way that we will progress. Uh, and uh, we expect this to get started uh, very quickly uh, and hopefully that I, I don't know how soon, it, uh, how long it will take because uh, some areas are damaged more than others, but uh, this is the uh, route through which we will go. The governor's office will have to sign the contracts anyway, so the governor's office should be the one that uh, FEMA uh, will stay in contact with. Uh, Art Faulkner, who is our EMA director, will be the point person on this, but that's the way this will progress. Uh, the governor's office, in conjunction with FEMA, will help clean up the waterways and make them safe again for uh, the uh, opportunities that we have for the people in this state. 
We've had very close contact with, with all of our mayors, our county commissioners, with uh, our sheriff departments. Uh, we have uh, weekly and sometimes more than weekly uh, communications with our mayors on conference calls. Uh, the EMA department has done a fantastic job having regional meetings uh, with our mayors and our county commissioners. Uh, we have tried to keep all of their questions answered. Uh, it's, it's very difficult. They are there on the ground. They know what the issue is. Uh, all of our local EMA people have done a very good job because they understand the area. They've been appointed by the county commission, and, and they understand the areas. So w communication has been the most important thing that has taken place, and I believe that that's the reason that this disaster, even as fragile as it is, as Mike Byrne says, uh, it still has progressed very smoothly. One of the other issues that I was concerned with on Wednesday as I talked with Mike, uh, and if any of you out there, if you have received a letter from FEMA denying your request, uh, 15,000 went out, and if you have received a letter, by now you should have received some sort of contact uh, to follow up with this denial so that you will understand that. Now, I have asked Mike Byrne to make sure that the letters that are being sent out to the people in Alabama are sensitive to the hurting people in this state. They cannot be cookie-cutter type letters. And uh, they are already working on changing the wording so that uh, we can be very sensitive uh, to people who are going through very difficult situations right now. Uh, you cannot write a letter in Washington uh, and, and, and make that letter fit an elderly couple in rural Alabama who has had their home blown away. And we want to make sure that these letters fit that. And we want to make sure that they're sensitive. Uh, and they can say the same thing, but you just need to make sure that, it, that you say it in the right way. One of the things that I did today that uh, we have upstairs a group of uh, individuals who are very caring. They're dealing with the death certificates. They're dealing with the burial uh, of the people of our state that have been killed. Uh, these are very caring people. I spoke with them just a few minutes ago. Uh, this is one of the hardest things that we do. And we need to always remember that you can replace houses, you can replace roads, you can replace trees because you can replant them, but you cannot replace the lives of people that are lost in the disaster. And we need to always keep them in our thoughts and prayers. I have visited with these people. I visited with, with the individuals uh, all over the state and family members. Uh, and, and I understand uh, the, the hurt and the problems that are going on across this state. Uh, I'm going to turn it over now to uh, Art and uh, Art Faulkner, who is our EMA director, uh, and then we will ask uh, Michael Byrne, who is our FEMA coordinator, uh, to also speak. So, Art. Good afternoon. Uh, we come before you at day 23 post storm. We have approximately 71,000 people that have registered for individual assistance in the state of Alabama. We have 42 counties that have been declared for individual assistance. And we have 67 counties that have been declared for public assistance to local government. But I think what we need to realize is that while those numbers, as time goes by, will continue to increase, that behind every one of those numbers are individuals. They're citizens of the state of Alabama. And as the governor continually reminds us that as we're doing this job, that we need to make sure that we put faces behind those numbers and that we put human beings behind those numbers and that just as he stated, that we'll have people that'll be out there that will be trying to provide the best assistance to our citizens that have been affected by these storms. 
Some of the other numbers that are sort of staggering from this catastrophic event is 53 identified tornado tracks with a combined length of over 610 miles and over 10 miles wide. These storms range from EF0 to the maximum of an EF5. One of the two primary missions that we have in the state right now is debris removal. Shortly after the governor requested that the president declare this a disaster area in an expedited manner and the president did that, we very quickly had to turn to being able to remove the massive amounts of debris that are in this state left from these catastrophic storms. The governor did an unprecedented thing shortly thereafter. He took away an issue of cost share to the local governments and he told them that the state would pick that up for the first 30 days of the cost of the non-federal portion in order to get those people out there, those counties and local governments out there moving that debris. That's very essential for us to be able to meet the second mission, which is long-term temporary housing. The governor also requested that the president increase the federal cost share for the debris at an amount up to 100%. A few weeks ago, the president authorized Operation Clean Sweep as a pilot project in the state of Alabama and in the state of Mississippi. Operation Clean Sweep deals with the areas of the state that have had the most catastrophic damage. It extends that debris removal capability to private property. For the past week and a half, people from the state local and the federal levels have been working to come up with a template and a plan to put out to the local governments to allow them to further pick up the debris, not just on the right of way, but into the areas of the private property within the track of the storm. This week, Mike Byrne and my state coordinating officer, or the governor's state coordinating officer, Jeff Byard, along with other state and federal officials, attended four meetings across the state to outline to the local governments what was required in order for them to participate in Clean Sweep. We are still working to identify areas in the state where Operation Clean Sweep needs to be provided in order to make sure that all of the debris is cleaned up. Initially, there were 25 counties that were included in Clean Sweep to include 34 municipalities. And there's an ongoing effort to add more counties and more municipalities into that. If there are local officials that still have questions about Operation Clean Sweep, they can contact my office at the State Emergency Management Agency or their local EMA in order to get those questions answered. But what I would like to stress is this, that nothing in Operation Clean Sweep prohibits local governments, whether they're using the Corps of Engineers as the direct federal assistance that the governor has requested, or they're using private contractors. It does not prohibit them from continuing to pick up debris that is on the right of way. So we would urge local governments to continue to aggressively pick up the massive amounts of debris that have been strewn across this state from these catastrophic events. We will continue to monitor that.